Hey everyone, Fellas Life here and welcome to part 10 of my Creative Kit tutorial series. This week we're going to be looking at enable markers and how to use them with static or you know just lighting or anything like that. Just basically in the game that you can enable and disable. Okay, so we're going to be doing a little bit of light scripting. I'm going to give you guys a uh, a little script so you can add this into your own you know file or ESP to make it very easy. Um, it's going to be very light modification to get it to work and very minimal effort. But uh, I'm actually going to show you guys how to use this script anyway for now. Okay, so first things first, we're going to need to get some lights. So I'm just going to go into my filter and put lighting. Or just light for short. We're going to wait for that to uh, load up. And we're going to pick some lights that we like. Okay, so we're just going to scroll down for something like this. You know, these are all... These are all lights. If we hit M here, we can see that. So that gives off sort of a little uh, you know, basic glow. Okay, what I'm actually going to do quickly is disable these lights. So I'm just going to hit 1 to hide those. And that one there. That one there. Hitting 1 twice to get rid of it. These are just uh, some lights for whenever I'm working on the mod. Um, but anyway, so let's get back to the little room we're working on. Okay, so we're just going to still pick a light that we like. So, default light warm, one spotlight. So this looks like it's going to be uh, pretty perfect for our little down lights. So what I'm going to do here, and I'll be right back, is I'm just going to move these underneath our little spotlights. So they look like they're in the right position. Okay, so we're back now. I've placed all them little lights, and you can see that gives a, you know, quite a realistic effect for the little spotlights. But what I'm also going to do is add a couple of ambient lights as well, so it's a little bit brighter in that room because it is quite dark. So I'm going to look for default light warm. As you can see, this is just a general, you know, sort of bright one. We want to be aware about, uh, you know, light leading into other rooms. We want to try and keep that to a minimum. So, I'm just going to drag that up here into the corner. Maybe another one. Keep that one quite small. Okay, so now we're done with our lighting. What we're going to do now is grab our enable marker. So, what we're going to do is type enable marker into the filter here and make sure you've got the all tab clicked. And it's going to bring up this little this little object here. We're going to drag that into the the uh, render window, and we're just going to put it somewhere, you know, half tidy. So let me just scroll in here a little bit, and I'm going to put mine here. So that's that's uh, pretty tidy. I'm always going to know that's for this room because it's on the wall, and it just we're going to know what it's for because it says enable disable on it. That's why we use this instead of the X markers because it's just a little bit more tidy. You can use X markers, it's going to do the same thing, but obviously this is just, it's a little bit more, you know, correct. So, okay, now we're going to click each and every one of our lights and we're going to go to Enable Parent. If, it's, if you can't see it, just hit these little arrows and you can find your way to it. And then we're going to hit where it says Copy Enable State From. We're going to select Reference in Window, double click it and you'll see Enable Marker. Okay, but what we need to do first is double click on our enable marker and hit edit. I want to give this a unique ID just so it's a little bit easier. So I'm going to call this second bedroom underground bunker four. You don't have to give it, you know, such a long name, just something that you can remember what it's for. And, you know, that's pretty much a small little description. We don't need to do a display name because, you know, it really doesn't matter. So we're just going to hit OK. Create a new form, yes, and then we're going to hit OK again. You don't really necessarily have to do this, but I just do because it, it makes things a little bit more tidy. Anyway, so we're still linked up because we've done that with the, uh, you know, we actually changed the name in that, so that's not going to change anything. So we're just going to go through with the rest of the lights here and do the enable parent.
Okay, so now that we've got everything connected up and it's all nice and uh, tidy and stuff, we can just click the enable disable marker you know once and it will show us all the arrows to make sure we've got every single one of those connected. Okay, now this is an option um, we can do. Okay, we're not going to go in the enable parent. We're going to go to down here. Okay, so if you want all the lights to be off whenever you first enter the room you can click this i recommend doing this because it just looks a little bit you know better whenever you're releasing a mod that all the lights are off and you know anyway but it doesn't really matter it's up to you guys so i'm just going to click this to have all my lights off okay next thing we're going to need to do is grab a button the button choice is pretty limited and they all sort of look pretty ugly so until somebody releases a mod or else I do a retexture or something for the buttons, this is what we're uh, stuck with. But it's still better than having uh, no buttons. Okay, so what I usually use is Red Rocket, Red Rocket Button Box. I'm just going to drag that in here. And there's a little button there. Double click that. And we're going to give it a new uh, reference ID. So... I'm just going to call this second bedroom button underground bugger fallout 4. Okay. Uh, this is going to be the name that, you know, whenever you come up to it, it's going to say, you know, press button or whatever, or E button. So I'm going to call this lights because, you know, this is only a tutorial. I may change all this later. And for now, we don't really want any, it's going to have a button or a uh, assigned in the script anyway so we don't really need to mess with any of this stuff so now we're going to hit ok and create a new form okay next what we're going to do is go to scripts whatever you guys do do not touch this script this script i know it sounds like you know default one state activator this is the only thing this script does is tell the button it's a button one state just means it pushes in and does something so no matter what you always want to leave this unless you're like quite an advanced descriptor but for us we're going to leave this here and we're going to click add so what we're going to do is hit new script here in brackets double click that we're going to call it something that we can remember so i'm going to call this second bedroom light toggle we can't really use any symbols or numbers or anything in this so it will have to be quite simple with the name, but something we can still, you know, remember. I know that probably looks like a bunch of gibberish to use, but I, I can, you know, I can distinguish what that is. Um, we're going to untick constant. We're going to click OK. And it's going to bring up a little window for us here in a second. And what we're going to do here is hit cancel. And now what we can see is our little script in there. And now we're going to use edit source. OK, so I'm going to expand this out a little bit. Now this is where the little script I'm going to give you is going to come in handy. So let me just grab it here from the one of my other windows. So we're just going to paste that in right there. We're not going to touch. We're not going to touch any of this. This is all good to go for no matter what. This script is actually being edited by a few people, but before me it was by R Dunlap on the uh, Nexus forums. So. I'll give a little link to that as well below the uh, script so he can have some credit. Anyway, so now we've got that done, we're going to hit build and compile. That's going to say in the bottom, compile succeeded. Next thing we're going to do is go to file and save. This is the important one. And if it doesn't say save succeeded, it hasn't worked. Even though it says, you know, compiled, if it doesn't compile whenever it's getting saved, it's not going to do anything. So that's done now. Now we're going to double click it. And in the script, it asks for an object reference. So we're going to just double click that, select reference in object window, and select our enable disable. Okay, so as you can see there, the reference is, you know, done. We're going to click OK, OK. And let's just make sure everything's closed here. We'll put the button somewhere stupid, you know, just doesn't really matter for now. We can change all this later. So I'll just plop it there. Make sure it's not sticking through the other side of the wall. It is. Bring it out a little bit. 
these are quite ugly buttons as I said before you know uh, I wish we had uh, some more choice but anyway now we're gonna hit save it's very important you should be saving throughout this whole process I know I haven't but that's just because I've got quite a stable build of Windows but not everybody's just the same you know what I mean so just hit save and then we're gonna go into game okay everyone now we're back in game we're just gonna load that up that's a pretty funny looking dog okay now we're in the cell that we were actually uh, playing about with so we're just gonna make our way over to the room that we were messing with okay as you can see there's our little spotlights if we hit the trigger there we go lights are on so you can use this script for basically anything that links up with a enable disable marker so a wall a door you know floor pieces of glass I actually have it the same exact script for this uh, this little fireplace here so as you can see I've put the name as light slash extinguish fire this isn't the same script here but if you want a tutorial on how to do these little uh, blind things I can do that I also have the same sort of idea for this as a hidden wall They're all linked multiple buttons to the same script. If you guys want to know how to do that, I can do that as well. But anyway, that's uh, pretty much it for this Chris Kit tutorial. If you guys liked it, please leave a like. If you didn't, don't and subscribe. You want to see more content like this. Thanks everyone. Have a nice night. And if you guys want, you can follow me on Twitter. I'll put a link in the description. And yeah, that's it. Peace out guys. Have a nice night.